MMA Rants and Graves, UFC 125, Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard too. Guys, let's talk about this fight. If you look at their first fight, the announcer mentioned this, and he said that Maynard said that he wants to stuff Edgar's takedowns and punish him on his feet. Now, if you think about it now, especially where these two fighters are right now, you would think it's just the opposite, that Edgar wants to stuff Maynard's takedowns and punish Maynard on his feet. So, obviously, things have changed since these fighters have fought, and their strategies may be very different coming into this particular fight. Now, I want to discuss these two fighters, and I want to, talk, I want to start with Edgar. You know, Edgar's a guy that he brings something to the table that's really tough for many fighters. He's just really quick. He can fight the fight on the outside, and then, of course, he's a great wrestler. So it poses problems for many fighters because you don't know when he's going to attack you, where he comes in and out, he'll attack you, and then when you try to counter, he's already out of there. You know, it's like trying to hit a mosquito in the dark. You know, you get attacked, and before you know where it's coming from, you know, he already escapes, and he comes back at you again. <laughs> and then before you know it, he's taking you down. So, you know, that's a tough guy to fight. And it seemed that that's the kind of strategy he was using against BJ Penn. Of course, in the second fight against BJ Penn, he was even more aggressive, and he was getting dominant takedowns, which is very surprising to me. I mean, to take a guy like BJ Penn down, they say, you know, he hasn't been taken down and held down for a very long time, especially in the lightweight division. I'm talking about when he's a lightweight. So that's how tough Edgar is. Now, Let's talk about Gray Maynard. You know, Gray Maynard brings something to the table which I don't think anybody brings. I mean, he's a Division One, you know, All American. I mean, three time Division One All American. And I don't know if any lightweights have that resume. And there's something else about him, and it's his size, and it's really hard to understand if you have two guys at 155 they should basically look more or less the same unless there's a height difference and one is more lanky you know or maybe smaller torso and longer limbs which make up for the weight difference but you know this guy is just a really big lightweight I remember he came in on an MMA show he was sitting next to Evans who's a light heavyweight and he actually looked big sitting next to him you know I mean he looked like a large guy sitting next to a light heavyweight you know so you know, it's interesting how he's able to get into that frame, 155. I mean, I think he must cut a lot of weight to get there. But he looks great doing it. I mean, his cardio is good. He's tough. And, I mean, he's able to make that weight and be really, really tough. So he poses a matchup problem for a lot of guys. And here's a point I want to make about that. And the point I want to make is that he's a wrestler. And if you look at all mixed martial arts out there, guys, look at all of them. Especially Muay Thai and I would say Jiu-Jitsu. Size may actually be an impediment to somebody who specializes in jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. Because Muay Thai, you gotta have quickness. You gotta have quickness. I mean, you gotta be able to move around quickly. Your hands have to move quick. Your legs have to move quick. And so, if you're bigger and you're a Muay Thai guy, it may slow you down. You know, because size can actually slow you down. So, if you think about it, you know, rather than help you, it may even hurt you. And jujitsu, you know, you, you got to be flexible. You have to be able to move around quickly to get submissions. You know, to get them locked in quick before the guy can react. So quickness is important as well. Versatility is important as well. You have to have good hip movements. You have to be able to move around well. And size can slow you down. So you know, in cases like that, it may actually be an impediment. But wrestling. I see it being the opposite. You know, here you have the technique. You have the three-time Division I All-American, right? And then at the same time, you have that size. And that's what Maynard brings to the table. I see him as the biggest 155-pounder. I don't see a guy at 155 pounds as, as big as this guy and as, as strong as he is. I mean, if you look at the end of that fight against Edgar, he was able to just pick up Edgar and slam him. He did it a number of times. He just has that power and that size. It's good cardio, too. It looked like Edgar was getting tired at the end of that fight. Edgar has amazing cardio. You saw it in the BJ Penn fight. I mean, if you look at that fight, at the end of five rounds, he looked like he had plenty of cardio. He looked like he could have kept on fighting for a while. 
And at the end of the Maynard fight, he just looked like he was tired. And Maynard looked like he was really full of pep and he was still ready to go. So basically, if you think about it, what makes the other fighter tired is being taken down all the time. You know, when you're lifted up and thrown down, that could knock a lot of wind out of you. Let me tell you something. That's why I always say takedowns matter. And they should be scored by the judges as something that should count in a fight. Now, what I'm trying to say here, of course, is that wrestling is different than other mixed martial arts because you bring that Division One wrestling in, right? And that All-American resume that he has, and then the size matters because when you have size in wrestling, in addition to the technique, you're able to use that to your advantage. I mean, you're able to physically you know, manhandle somebody. It's pure grappling and it's power. You're able to impose your size. You're able to, you know, basically control the other fighter as opposed to him controlling you because it's wrestler versus wrestler. You have Edgar being a wrestler, of course, and you have Maynard being a wrestler. But when you throw size into the equation, the size is going to be the difference. You know, the size is going to basically be what gives the advantage to the guy who has that size. And that's what Maynard brings to the table. He's got that size. The other thing about Maynard is his power, you know, how good he is as a wrestler. You know, people may overlook his striking. His striking is also really good. So, you know, he's able to mix it up well. And, you know, he just brings all that to the table. Now, as far as Edgar, you know, for him to win this fight, he obviously, I mean, in my opinion, has to fight this fight on the outside. He has to implement some of the same strategies he used against BJ Penn. Be really quick, fluid, accurate with the strikes, and don't try to engage Maynard as much as he did in the last fight. You know, you got to understand something. Edgar did get Maynard down once. It was a nice takedown that he had, but, you know, Maynard got right back up to his feet again. So that's another thing that's going to be tough. You know, the question is, even if Edgar can get Maynard down, can he control him? Now, I think that Edgar can go for takedowns, but it has to be set up. He has to frustrate Maynard enough. He can stay on the outside and fight him, and then frustrate him enough, he may go for a takedown and he might get it. But he has to basically mix it up. It's like football, you know? If you one-dimensionally just, you know, throw the ball down the field, right, you're going to be predictable, but and you try to hit him down the field, and then the defense is basically clamming down, then use your running game. So it's the same thing with mixed martial arts. What you do is, you know, you fight the fight standing up, and then when the other fighter least expect it, you go for a takedown. So I think Edgar should implement a strategy like that. If he sees an opportunity, if he can soften Maynard enough or frustrate him enough, he might be able to go for takedowns, and it might be, you know, pretty successful. Now, as far as Maynard, I see Maynard coming into this fight with a lot of confidence. He does have the victory over Edgar already, and I think he should just mix it up, you know, use the striking and then go for the takedowns. And if he's even more aggressive with his wrestling in the second fight, he may be able to tire Edgar out and basically dominate this fight. So it's going to be a really interesting fight to see how these two fighters go about things and their game plans, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, I'd like to know what you think about the fight. Please leave your comments below the video, rate this video, and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in.